Welcome to SAT TV's news. I am Shana Esprit, your presenter. In our top stories, senior educator against privatizing of education, U.S. lawmakers blast Bahamas, Egypt Muslim Brotherhood leader Mohammed Badi held, and in sports, actor Gerard Butler supports Jamaica Talawas in the Lima Call CPL. Details of these will follow. Music is life, you don't know. And I'm all set and ready to blow I got some places out there I wanna see It's gonna be high yeah. So put your hand in the air just for me I want it up for the world to see Cause I wanted you when me a fire I'll bring the flame It's gonna be high yeah. Boom, this is Mr. Knight and you're listening and watching Sat Telecoms. Boom! Welcome back. Young people have been advised to take advantage of the opportunities available in information communication technology as they are the innovators of ICT in Dominica. This was according to Minister for Information, Telecommunications and Constituency Empowerment, Honorable Ambrose George, when he spoke at the opening ceremony of a mobile application development workshop on Monday, August 19. Mr. George stated, we need to be aware of the importance of ICT in Dominica and the advantages of electronic devices. Well, unless we develop that intellect that we have in terms of the capacity um, we may find ourselves having all of those um, pieces of, of equipment and not being utilize, being able to utilize them to the fullest and um, you've been told and I'm sure it's no news to you that in Dominica we have about 140 percent penetration in the mobile phones Electronic devices, such as mobile phones, he noted, can be used for a number of advantageous purposes, which is something we need to harness here in Dominica. We need to work on building awareness in the young people so they are fully aware of the various functions and full abilities of mobile phones. There's no doubt in my mind that we have in Dominica a cadre of savvy young people. And I use the word sad, very bright, very highly intellectual. And I think we, we are just waiting for that moment in Dominica where we can have breaking news that one of our young people in Dominica um, has developed an application that could be sold to any of the um, international uh, companies and, and be a millionaire in a day. So to speak. We've heard it. We've seen it on television. We've heard it. The very young 18, 16 year old young people uh, using the intellect and, 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 and the, the, the systems that they have and, and overnight can, can, can bring about an industry that can create jobs, that can bring revenue to themselves and their families. And I, I think we, we are equally poised in Dominica. We, we do have very bright people. Um, 11 ones at CXT, I mean, <laughs> that, that's, that's tremendous. Mr. George noted, we possess the intellect and capacity, but what we need is to be able to apply it in our country to the best of our abilities. This will aid in boosting the ICT sector as it relates to application development, specifically during a time when the government is working on bringing several of its services closer together. For example, the kind of goods at customs. Uh, you can stay in your office, clear your goods online, and just go down there and pay, pay your dues. Uh, in fact, I think they're moving towards actual payment online so that you can do everything and just go down to the port and, and, and pick up your goods. I mean, for those of you who have had that experience um, before, it was really, uh, you know, 
time wasting and, and time consuming to go down to customs and join a line trying to you know pay some some goods which you would probably need immediately so the facilitation is now there and, uh, and that's just one example of an application which brings the, the business and the service are closer to to our citizens and um, so by and by 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 developing that intellectual capacity um, what we are in fact doing we are creating a smart and intelligent society smart and intelligent society so so no longer will we you know facebook you know social media and so on but we'll see people now utilizing their mobile phones um, to do smart things he added through advances in technology there is an abundance of opportunities for entrepreneurs which is why the government is working to create an enabling environment in more news dominica is on a mission to inform its citizens on the practices and functions of the caribbean court of justice and how it can be beneficial. A town hall meeting was held in Grand Bay on August 19th with a panel of three to create awareness for the people of Grand Bay on what the CCJ is about. Ian Douglas, Minister for Tourism, was the first panelist to affirm that Dominica is capable of managing its own affairs. But we cannot say that we are capable of managing every aspect of our daily lives and our activity if we continue to have some aspects of our lives being managed by those who are our colonizers, by the mother country. We cannot, because independence has to be complete. We cannot on the one hand speak of political independence, having our own government, having our own prime minister, and even our own president. We do Mr. Douglas said the issue of going back to the Privy Council for a final decision in terms of illegal matters must be corrected. Among the various arguments put forward in support of Dominica and other jurisdictions in the Caribbean, joining the CCJ is the issue of sovereignty. In 2001, CARICOM ratified the um, agreement establishing the Caribbean Court of Justice, the CCJ. In 2003, Dominica signed the agreement because different countries signed at different times. And in 2005, uh, the 16th of April 2005, the CCJ was inaugurated. Mr. Peter said Dominica decided to include itself to the other three islands which have already joined the CCJ, as well as other jurisdictions within the region, including St. Lucia. Meanwhile, Ms. Noreen John, a representative for the Dominica Bar Association, said the CCJ may sound a bit foreign, but it is more beneficial in several ways. What it means is that you are going to, rather than going to the Privy Council, as was explained earlier on, to take an appeal case and spend thousands of dollars and get QCs and lawyers when you get out there, and the amount of money an appeal matter would cost one. Rather than having to go through that, we have the CCJ right there. And it is the important point I want to note is that you don't even have to go to Trinidad. They can come to Dominica. They can actually go around the countries that, have, that are participating. So it will be much cheaper as far as um, when it comes to the cost. The Caribbean Court of Justice was established in 2001 to replace the London-based Privy Council and also serves as an international tribunal interpreting the revised Treaty of Shagoramas that governs CARICOM. In more stories, the Public Service Training Center was filled with numerous persons involved in the audio-visual sector, among others, all eager to learn as they began a workshop on music videos on Monday, August 19th. This was a result of the collaborative effort of the Discover Dominic Authority through the Dominica Film Office in association with the Audiovisual Association of Dominica. The workshop will run for three weeks and come to a close on Tuesday, September 6. Filmmaker, editor and trainer Mr. Oriel Rodriguez from the International School of Film and Television in Cuba is the facilitator of the workshop. Okay, we're going to be teaching for the next three weeks a, a, a workshop on how to produce and shoot 
and edit uh, music videos. I mean, it's something that is extremely important today for the music industry. I mean, uh, we're going to be teaching the how to make them from the point of view of us in the Caribbean. I mean, we, we're going to be using, we're bringing lots of music videos that have been shot in, in, in Cuba and in other countries in, the, in, in Latin America, as an example, of what you can do here in, in, in Dominica with the resources uh, that you have here. So I think uh, it's going to be very good, it's going to be fun, and we are hoping to get by the end of the third week four uh, music videos with really good quality that we can uh, broadcast and distribute around the world. Mr. Rodriguez noted one of the important aspects of music videos is that it gives all the freedom of the world to the artist to experiment. A music video is a very free format of expression, he said, because in movies or documentaries, there are boundaries that cannot be crossed. Currently, there are no difficulties faced for people of the Caribbean as compared to those in the more developed countries, including the United States and Europe when filming music videos, he said. Once you have a good creative mind, the will and the resources in Dominica or any other country, very good quality music videos can be shot. I mean, we, we have an example in Cuba that in the last five, six years, I mean, there is a huge boom of music videos in Cuba and it's amazing, the, the, the quality. I'm bringing lots of them to show uh, to, to the students and I'm go we're going to be analyzing them, the way they were shot and the condition they were shot and the cameras and the equipment we used. And you will be amazed that you can do that same here in Dominica. It's just the will. The will. I mean, it's wrong to look at MTV as the model because, of course, they have all the money in the world. Still, the, uh, the, uh, they're, they're getting cheaper and cheaper in the U.S. too because uh, now there is less money uh, to, to make music videos, not like in the 80s. It's a completely different uh, way now. And now with the Internet, it's, it's a completely different ball game. With technology advances, many people now own cell phones with high-definition video capability, so anyone can use this device to shoot a music video. They do not have to depend on the major networks to broadcast their video, as they can now use social networks to do so, he added. As it relates to music videos, he noted that social networks are very important. They have a wide audience, and once published, videos go viral quickly and are shared with friends, providing to launch average musicians to megastars. The workshop will also address areas including creating storyboards, location selection and contraction, copyright, casting, production, editing, synchronization, and color correction. And the good thing about music video is that you can experiment. I mean, if, you, if, if the source material is very good, of course, it allows you to go from, from A to B and do, do whatever you want with the image. If the material already that you have shot is really poor quality, you don't have much room to play around with. If the quality is very good, then you can put it like, try to look, make it look like it is being shot on a, on a small phone or something, or you can make it look like it is being f for, the, uh, for the big screen. Of course, good quality is much better. But in music video, there is no rules, so you can mix a bad quality image together with a good quality image, and it could be part of the aesthetics. So. Mr. Rodriguez explained his goal at the end of this workshop is to develop courage in the people of Dominica to go out into the environment and shoot music videos to promote their music so it can be known and heard worldwide. According to the filmmaker, if this is not done, their music will be isolated to Dominica and it does not help any artist to be known only in the local arena. The facilitator who has been coming to Dominica for four years now stated the only way to learn is to be practical, in addition to exercising theoretical knowledge. In more stories, Vice President of the Caribbean Union of Teachers, Celia Nicholas, is concerned over talk to privatize education in the region. Mrs. Nicholas says many students throughout the Caribbean will be deprived from gaining an education if the move becomes a reality. There is a move in education being privatized. And we are afraid that good quality education will just be a privilege for a few children. And it means that if you do, parents do not have the money or the states do not have the money, that only a small proportion of our children will get the type of education that, they, that is their right and not a privilege. 
She said privatization of education is becoming more popular. However, it comes at a cost. How many of our parents, how many of our students, how many of different agencies will be able to meet that cost? And the important thing is the outcome of the child, what happens to the child. Meanwhile, the union passed several resolutions at its 36th biannual conference in Guyana this month. The first one with the violence and zero tolerance for violence against teachers, the SBA component of the CXC exams. We are to engage, have further discussion with the registrar and the ministries of education across the Caribbean. And of course, we had the third one dealing with the professionalization of the teaching profession, re the teaching councils. There were also three standing committees, finance, culture and sports, with two being headed by representatives from Dominica. Ms. Isabel Apprentice represented the Finance Committee, while Mr. Francis John Wiz represented Culture. The 37th biannual conference will be held in the Commonwealth of Dominica. In other stories, on Tuesday, August 20th, at the Fort Young Hotel, Governor of the Eastern Caribbean Central Bank, Sir Dwight Venner, hosted a presentation on the OECS development. The topic discussed was OECS Business Council and the key sectors for development during these challenging economic times. Mr. Venner said, from the country's independence to present, we have forged a reasonably good path. The crisis isn't over yet, and this is what we all need to do to reflect upon, he stated. Because at the end of this crisis, the financial economy will not be what it was before. I mean, the changes that are going on are so fundamental that uh, when it does find into your structural changes, uh, they will be a different environment and we will have to continue to be adapting to that. Now, what are the possibilities um, for us? What are the possibilities for us? Okay. One possibility is that we become failed or failing states. That is, all the indicators go in the wrong direction. And uh, we can provide uh, for our population. The governor pointed out that we need to have facts and figures in order to resolve problems, rather than imprecise suggestions. He added that many complain that loans in this century are quite small. However, the interest rates are high. The question often asked, he said, as if smallness is the problem, what is the solution? The governor responded by saying, simply become bigger. If your population is smaller, you need a bigger population. Uh, but you know, we, we confine ourselves to very small spaces and we don't want anybody to enter our space and still expect to, to make progress. Okay. Um, that is not uh, a feasible not in mathematics and biology. Biology, the whole concept of cretinism, when you have populations that um, new things are not injected, then there are no new ideas, there are no new innovations, so people like it that way, but it is not a feasible way in this view of the particular. He added that some of the ways that countries, larger countries in general, survived and improved was by capturing and purchasing lands like how the United States purchased Alaska. All the oil is there now. Okay? Louisiana, the United States purchased Louisiana. Yeah. So that was possible. That won't see a sign in the oil. <coughs> now, there's some, there's some other choices which you may or may not like so that you can be absorbed by countries who you think um, they like you. He is reminding the public that in order to grow as a person and a country, one must be open to new concepts. In other stories, Gregory Rabes, creolist and cultural activist, has informed SAD TV that the cultural division has organized a workshop dubbed for drum makers throughout the island. Mr. Patrick Solvay, a tutor from the Guadeloupe, conducted the workshop. Uh, he's from the Saint Reprise, the Reprise Centre in Guadeloupe. It's a centre which deals a lot with Guoka music 
and of course the organizing of the Goka Festival. So we're fortunate um, to have him. He was down here for the Nature Island Literary Festival as part of the Rezo Poetic Guadeloupe. And he stayed on a couple of days with us to do this drumming workshop. This workshop is directed towards the more experienced drum makers throughout Dominica and is aimed towards the improvement of their techniques. Oftentimes our local artists are not given enough credit and it is hoped that this workshop will expose their skills and talents. Because they can already make drums, but it's to improve their techniques, to enhance uh, the, the techniques and the finish of the drum uh, so that in fact they can uh, enhance the actual products, the drums that we have here in Dominica. And of course the cultural division uh, has two other objectives really is to expand the playing of drums here in Dominica, traditional drums, and of course to uh, introduce drumming uh, to a greater extent in the school system as well. In order to expose drum playing into schools island-wide, we need to have drums, hence the need for this workshop, Mr. Rabe stated. Grand Bay resident Thomas Defoe said this was a great experience for him because although he knew how to do certain things like mounting of the drums, he learned additional techniques. And how to set up the drum, but the tightening of the drum to get the finishing touch. I didn't have the idea with a spoon. He's caught in the skin, and I didn't have that, um, that idea. So for me, it is great, and it's a long time. I'm waiting to see black people like we from Guadeloupe come together and do something. And I hope we're going to continue, you know, to make it better. Yeah, the brother, he is good. He gives you a clean touch on the drums. Yeah, I'm Thomas Zifo again. I enjoyed it and I learned much more. Another participant, Imelda Aaron, who is also the leader of Portsmouth Cultural Group, is thrilled that she participated in this workshop because she can now bring back what she learned to her cultural group. Could not, I knew nothing about building drums before, but I was always interested, I always loved drums and I'm so happy that I took part in it. I learned a lot and I think I can put up a drum all by myself. All I need, the challenging part will be to get the, um, the, 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 the wood part, the tree. So, but the guys will help me out, they'll get it and I, I can get the rope and everything else and I think I'll be able to put up a drum by myself. This is what a Guadeloupean participant had to see. Oui, bien quand même aussi radi gouvernement Dominique et puis surtout aussi centre culturel là et Gregory a best merci de vu témoin vinn partager vers les frères et pour montrer yo yon des techniques pour fabriquer tambour. Donc on vinn montrer yo, on pas vinn souvle montrer yo fait tambour, on vinn continuer avec yo fait tambour. Montrer yo yon des techniques que nous ni pour yo continuer fait tambour là puisque c'est tambour qui ca lianer nous tout en Caraïbes là. Donc c'est ça qui fait que nous restons frais, c'est tambour qui fait que nous en connexion toute Caraïbe là. Donc ça a fait un plaisir euh, vers Raspol, Thomas et tout Bandolo et Imelda aussi. Donc euh, c'est un bon moment passé avec eux, un bon semaine nous passons ensemble et nous allons tenir contact là pour nous continuer son nez tambour ensemble vous et nous et pour nous souder les âge africain là en Caraïbe là. According to the participants, they have learned a lot of beneficial techniques throughout the workshop and commended the cultural division for this initiative. And in entertainment, a 12-member rap group established last year, November of 2012, is actively making a name for themselves within the music industry in Dominica, but their aim is to become well-known international artists. Members from 365 MMP says the sky is the limit for everyone, but their dreams exceed far beyond the skies. Right now what we are trying to do, you know, our basic genre in music, especially in Dominica, you have um, is reggae, dancehall, bouillon, and right now what we're trying to do is to bring a new flavor, a new genre, something new, especially to the, um, especially for my generation, that's what I can say. So we're trying to pave the way because we know we have a lot of other artists doing the same thing. We have a lot of other people who sing, who do R&B, um, as well as hip hop, just like we do. But if you look at how things are now, there's no, no one really, no role models that we have in the male industry to say, well, yeah, I want to be like that person because that person was from my country. 
Messiah, one of the team members for 365 MMP, said the group is currently trying to pave the way to success. Presently, they are persistent in their cause to make their names as well as their talents known in Dominica and other region, not dismissing the dreams of becoming international artists one day. The rap artists also mentioned that their experiences in writing and rapping came from role models including Jay-Z, Drake, and Eminem, who are all successful individuals in the industry. Really, sometimes you listen to different types of genres of music and basically you get an energy from a certain type of music and there the certain type of music was rap, rap hip-hop. When I first started rapping, I started in the basement my brother and then I grew up listening to G I started listening to Jay Z, Big L, Frick Dan, a few other rappers and yeah I felt the energy that I wasn't feeling from anything else. At the moment I didn't want to sing. Though I have a whole bunch of singers in my family and well, whatnot, but the singing didn't really catch me at the moment. The energy from the rap, the way they, they put the bars together, the lines and the hooks and everything just sound real crisp, you know. Rapper Remedy said what sets them apart from other Dominican artists is the professionalism that they portray wherever they go and in whatever they do. He said their standards in performances and writing is prepared at an international level where any individual can listen and appreciate the style the group is trying to offer. Right, and local rap these days, I know that mixing your music with a lot of Creole in there Songs are real good from the country because I mean that's our culture, you know. But to do it on another level for the world to know, you have to do it at an international level. For see, America is the mother country, you yeah. know. So you have to start at the mother country first. Then, if you want to, when you rap, you bring in your country's culture, put a little quail in your music. Remy and Messiah both agree that if 365 MMP becomes successful. It will pave the way for upcoming artists to venture into that genre. Yeah. I don't give a shit about the folders, cop of the video, and up with the load, and they be like, they be like, you could probably be the kid in the booth that the rock with the bow was rock of the boulder. Came back top of the oldest, Jeffy got the Mac at the back, on top of that, they be looking at everything at the back of the fact, but I'm not with the novice now. Nah. I fill up a little, eat up a middle, give her the riddle. You know what they do? Do to be little. I am a quiddle, give her the riddle, giving it all. I am the evil carnival of all. You know the people is sick of them all, and brotherly hid in the booth. You know I'm a little bizarre. Around them and never dealing with the competence. Lyrical demons around the den. I am the kid with the confidence, taking over like a bomber did. Can you money guy I'm proud of him? On top of like binoculars, they be like he's so provocative. Gary! I'm at And in court news, a Silver Lake man has escaped jail time, subsequent to stealing grapes from a fruit store in Roseau. 21-year-old Kurtzson Charles appeared before Magistrate Evelina Baptist on Monday, August 19th on three charges of theft of grapes from Fruits Plus. He pleaded guilty to all charges. According to the facts of the case, on August 6, 13, and 15th, the defendant stole a portion of grapes valued at $60 on the days in question. A report on the incident was made by the owner of Fruits Plus, Philbert Leta, and Charles was detained. Although Charles had denied the allegations made against him, he later admitted to eating the grapes but said he did not steal it. Magistrate Baptist, before handing down her sentence, asked Charles why she should not send him to prison. He pleaded for a non-custodial sentencing instead. Charles was charged with $1,950 in fines to the court and $180 in compensation to Fruits Plus by January 31, 2004, or in default, spend 11 weeks in prison. In more court news, a loader man has been fined $20,000 after he was charged with the possession and cultivation of 123 cannabis plants. On Saturday, 17th August, 55-year-old Denrick Roy was arrested at about 9.30 a.m. at his house. Mr. Roy pleaded guilty to both charges when he appeared before Chief Magistrate Evelina Baptist on August 19th. According to the facts of the case, police officers, while on patrol, inhaled a strong cannabis aroma and noticed plants that appeared to be marijuana. 
when the defendant was questioned by police, he explained that it was just some grains that were placed outside to dry. Police Prosecutor Inspector Claude Weeks informed the court that the plants were developing in a wooden box near the defendant's house. Roy admitted to the police that the cannabis and the land belonged to him. Defense attorney Wayne Norde solicited for leniency for his client as a first-time offender. He asked the court to take into consideration that his client did not waste the court's time by pleading guilty and claim the marijuana and the land on which it was found. Prior to sentencing, Magistrate Baptist emphasized on the ills of drugs to society. Roy was ordered to pay $4,000 by January 31st, 2014 on the possession of cannabis charge or in default spend six months in prison. He was also charged $16,000 for the cultivation of cannabis by January 31st, 2014 or in default spend 11 months in prison. This has been the local segment of the news. Coming up next, the regional highlights. Have you ever wanted to order on the internet but don't own a credit card or you're just fed up of the high prices of items locally? Well, the solution is Kemet's Online Services. Kemet's Online Services. Order a wide variety of items and get your items in as quick as 5 to 10 days. For placing orders or for more information, call 614-9550. The sky's the limit with Kemet's Online Services.